Nós estamos continuando com a nossa série de mensagens, parábolas de Jesus. Mais uma vez a gente tem um convidado especial de noite. Once again we have a special uh, speaker tonight. Pastor Pedro está nos abençoando. <laughs> Eu tenho certeza de que o Senhor tem algo especial reservado para você. Eu quero pedir que você abra o seu coração. Eu like to Esteja disponível para entender, para ouvir e para aplicar a palavra do Senhor. Vamos ver esse vídeo antes da palavra. Uh, you might want to open 
to Luke 14. We learned that Jesus was talking. He was he was in the midst of these Pharisees and lawyers from about verse 1. E a partir do versículo 1, mais ou menos, nós vemos que Jesus estava no, no, no meio uh, desses fariseus, desses advogados. And it's important to notice also that to remember that these Pharisees, these Jewish leaders, were very, very religious people. É importante também lembrar que os fariseus, esses líderes judeus, eram pessoas muito, muito religiosas. They had requirements, they had duties, they had responsibility, constraints. Eles tinham requisitos, tinham responsabilidades, legalismos. They had end, endless rituals and self-sacrifice. They were legalists. Eles tinham rituais sem fim, sacrifícios sem fim, eles eram muito legalistas. It doesn't mean that they were necessarily good people. Não quer dizer necessariamente que eram pessoas boas. But they thought they were really good. Mas eles achavam que eram muito bons. Because they tried really hard to obey all the commandments. Porque eles tentavam They knew that there were 613 commandments in the Old Testament and they prided themselves on obeying all of those. More, moreover, they prided themselves, I think, on the oral traditions that were accompanying those, those that law. So the point is that they were very religious, but it doesn't mean that they were necessarily righteous. And so Jesus is at this lunch and he's talking, he's giving, he's, he's eating with these people. And all of a sudden he starts to talk about the resurrection of the just. E de repente ele começa a falar sobre a ressurreição do justo. And one particular man pipes up and says, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. E um dos homens que estava na mesa falou, Feliz será aquele que comer o banquete do reino de Deus. And it was for this reason Jesus began to tell this parable. E era por causa disso que Jesus conta essa parábola. He knew that these Pharisees figured if anybody was going to be at this great feast, In the kingdom of heaven, with God, it was certainly going to be them. So Jesus tells the story. He talks about this man who gave this great, great banquet. And then in verse 17, it says, that at the right time, at the time, the banquet, For the banquet, he sent his servants to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. In Jewish culture, there were generally two, two invitations. It's because they lived in a place where there were no clocks. It was an agricultural society. And it took time to prepare a meal. They had to get everything ready. They had to kill the animal, clean the animal. They had to get all the preparations ready. So they went around and they announced, we're going to have this big banquet. And all these people who received this invitation knew that on a particular day, they didn't know when there was going to be the second announcement. E todas as pessoas que eram convidadas sabiam que no futuro não sabiam qual dia haveria o outro anúncio. Because this man was such a prominent figure, this was a big deal. E por causa que esse homem era uma figura tão importante no lugar, isso era um era um banquete importante. It would kind of be like, um, for example, if the president of the United States invited me to dine with him in the White House. Seria como se o presidente dos Estados Unidos me convidasse para jantar com ele na Casa Branca. And if I got that invitation, I would put it in my agenda. E se eu recebesse esse convite, eu colocaria na minha agenda. Because I would consider it important. Porque eu consideraria importante. There's no way that I would say at the day when I received the call from the president, now is the day. That I would, I wouldn't say, well, sorry, President, I've got to go do some shopping at Walmart. De jeito nenhum, no dia que eu recebesse o convite ao final, eu diria, não, senhor presidente, eu não posso, eu tenho que fazer compras no Walmart. And so, back to the story, the servant sent all the the man 
sent the servant to tell everybody it's time. Come now. Então, história, o homem mandou o seu servo para avisar para todos que tinham sido convidados. Agora é lá. And so the Bible says that all these men who had originally intended to go or gave, gave that, given that, that sign, they began to make these excuses. And one of them said, well, I bought a field and I have to go out and see it. Please have me excused. And the other guy says, well, I just bought five yoga of oxen, and I need to go examine them, so please have me excused. And another one says, I've just married a wife, and therefore I can't come. These might not seem like bad things, but it was very obvious that these people did not want to go. If a man had bought a field, wouldn't he have looked at the field before he bought it? He had told this man, yeah, I'm going to go to your, your, your big dinner. But then when the time comes and the man, the servant comes out and says, it's time, it's time, let's go. The first guy says, well, I've got these, uh, this land, I've got to go check it out. It was a flimsy excuse. The next one says, I bought five yoke of oxen, I have to go examine it. Please, please excuse me. That would be like me saying, well, um, I bought a car, let's say a brand new BMW. And then I can't go to the White House because, well, I've got to go test the car. Wouldn't you have done that before you made the purchase? This was, these were flimsy excuses. And the last guy says, well, I just got married, so I can't come. He could have decided when to get married beforehand, planning uh, ahead of time for this great event. In some places in Jewish culture, or in the, the Eastern culture, this was such a great uh, offense that it would have been like declaring war with somebody. Em algumas áreas, na, na cultura judaica ou até na cultura ocidental, isso era uma ofensa tão grande que seria como declarar guerra contra alguém. So these people were saying, I don't care about your party and I don't want to go. Essas pessoas estavam dizendo, eu não estou nem aí com a sua festa, eu não quero ir. And so for this reason, this man becomes really angry. Então por essa razão, esse homem se And so he says to his servant, go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant came back and said, sir, I've done what you've done. I've looked in all the little street corners. I've looked for all these blind people, these poor people, and there's still more room in your hall. And the man says, well, then get out, please, to the highways, the byways, and go outside the city and look for any person that you can find and compel them to come because I want my house to be full. Então o senhor ele falou para o servo, vá para os caminhos, para os valados, obrigue-os a entrar para que minha casa fique cheia. And the last verse in this parable is the point that Jesus is trying to make. E o último versículo dessa parábola é o ponto que Jesus quer fazer. Because every parable is kind of like a joke. Porque toda parábola é como uma piada. It's not meant for humor, but there's always a punchline. Não, não é feito para o humor, mas tem que ser. So if you're reading a parable, look for that punchline. What is the main point that Jesus is trying to teach? And the last verse says, For I tell you, none of these men who were invited shall taste my banquet. That last statement shows us that Jesus is really talking about the marriage of the Supper of the Lamb. 
essa última frase nos mostra que Jesus está realmente nos falando a respeito do casamento do, 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 do banquete do, do, do cordeiro. E a uh, Bíblia shows us that everybody who is who has faith in Jesus one day we're all going to be together for this great feast in heaven. E a Bíblia nos conta que todo mundo que tem fé em Jesus um dia vai estar junto no céu para esse grande banquete, essa grande celebração juntos. Think about that. Pense sobre isso. We're talking about all the Christians that have ever received Jesus throughout all the, the centuries. Estamos falando sobre todos os crentes que já receberam Jesus através de todos os séculos. All those who love Jesus. Todos aqueles que amam Jesus. We're talking about not just today. We're talking about people from the time of Jesus. We're talking about uh, 153. AD, we're talking about 293 AD. We're talking about all these different centuries with this huge amount of people together. Não estamos falando somente de hoje, mas de pessoas do tempo de Jesus, de uh, antes do tempo de Jesus, depois do tempo de Jesus, todas as pessoas juntas num lugar. And it's going to be one really happy time. E vai ser um, um tempo muito uh, muito legal. Because we as we're called the bride of Christ, we're going to be together with our groom, our no our, our noivo. Porque a Bíblia nos refere a nós como a, 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 a noiva de Cristo. Vamos estar juntos com o noivo. Here's the problem. Eis o problema. Many times in the church, we think that everything is great. Muitas vezes na igreja pensamos que tudo está joia. And we think that we're going to go to heaven. E pensamos que nós vamos para o céu. And I think it's It's good to look back on this parable and realize to whom Jesus was talking. Eu acho que é bom que olhemos essa parábola e que nós vejamos para quem que Jesus estava contando a parábola. He was talking to religious people. Ele estava falando com pessoas religiosas. He was talking to people like you and me. Ele estava falando com pessoas como você. Como he was talking to people like deacons in a church. Ele estava falando com pessoas como diáconos na igreja. He was talking about to people like pastors. Estava falando com pessoas como pastores na igreja. He's talking about to religious leaders. Ele estava falando com líderes religiosos. And he was telling these religious leaders that you guys are not going to be in heaven. Ele estava falando para esses líderes religiosos, vocês não vão estar no céu. The problem with these Pharisees and these scribes and these lawyers. O problema com esses fariseus isn't that they weren't doing good things. Não é que eles não estavam fazendo coisas boas. But they had strived to do so many good things that they had lost sight of the one who gave them the good things to do. Mas eles estavam tentando fazer tantas coisas boas que já tinham perdido a noção da pessoa uh, que tinha dado. Well, they had lost sight of the, the reason for the rules. Eles tinham perdido a razão pelos quais essas leis existiam. They loved the law of God more than the God of the law. Eles amavam a lei de Deus mais do que And this is a common problem, friends, for people who have been in the church for a long time. Oftentimes, it's the people outside of the city, the sinners, the blind, the sick. It's often those people who have the great testimonies, and when they're saved, they're really saved. Muitas vezes é o pessoal que está fora da igreja, o pessoal que está nos becos, os pobres, aleijados, cegos, bancos. Aquelas são as pessoas que, quando salvas, são realmente salvas. Listen to me. The invitation to to come to Jesus, to enter the kingdom of heaven, is for every single person. Escute o convite de Jesus para entrar no reino do no reino dos céus é para todos que estão aqui. There's no distinction between one person or another here. Não há nenhuma distinção entre uma pessoa e outra aqui. It doesn't matter whether you're Brazilian or you're American. Não importa se você é brasileiro ou americano. It doesn't matter whether you're old or young. A velho ou jovem. It doesn't matter if you're good looking or ugly. The invitation is for everybody. It doesn't matter whether you are talented and you know how to preach or teach. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. The invitation to come to Jesus is for everybody here. It's for everybody who wants to accept it. The problem with the Pharisees is that they didn't want it. 
And so this invitation was given, and the man had to resort to calling the people outside the city. Então esse convite foi rejeitado e o homem tinha que It's interesting if you notice that even in Brazil, the gospel seems to grow or, or, or prosper the most, accepted, be accepted the most by the people who are the most needy. Interessante é que nós vemos aqui como no Brasil que o, o evangelho tem que ser aceito principalmente para o povo que é mais necessitado. Because people who have a lot of money often think they need God. Porque muitas vezes pessoas que têm muito dinheiro não acham que precisam de Deus. And I'm not saying that only the poor can come into the kingdom of heaven, but sometimes if you look up in the northeast of Brazil, you find these people who are uh, desperately poor. Eu não estou dizendo que só os pobres entram no reino de Deus, mas às vezes nós olhamos, por exemplo, para o Nordeste do Brasil, onde vemos pessoas necessitadas. And they, oftentimes they have a greater openness to receive the gospel. E muitas vezes têm uma abertura muito maior para receber o Evangelho. They come to the, the church thinking if anybody can help me, maybe God can. Eles vêm à igreja pensando se alguém pode me ajudar, talvez seja Deus. And sometimes people like that have great testimonies afterwards. This is what God has done in their lives. Pessoas assim muitas vezes têm uh, testemunho muito poderoso sobre o que Deus tem feito na vida deles. Sometimes people who have been hard-nosed criminals and uh, people who have hurt other people and, and been wanted by the law, they get saved and they have great testimonies. Às vezes pessoas talvez que eram criminosas, buscadas, procuradas pela lei, são salvos e têm grandes testemunhos. The problem is that a lot of people who are in the churches and think for sure that they're going to be in heaven are the ones that aren't going to make it. O problema é que muitas vezes o povo que está na igreja, que acha que com certeza eu vou estar no céu, são as pessoas que não vão estar. You'd be surprised. Você está ali ficaria surpreso. It could be that the people that you think, oh no way, there's no way he's going to be in heaven, he dresses like a bum. Talvez, a, talvez a, as pessoas que você olha e pense de jeito nenhum que esse cara vai estar no céu, parece um vagabundo. We, ju we judge people with such things because they don't carry a Bible. Julgamos as pessoas, falamos, olha, esse cara nem, nem carrega uma Bíblia. And he doesn't even look like a good person. Nem parece como uma pessoa boa. And sometimes the people that you least expect you'll find in heaven. E às vezes as pessoas que nós menos esperamos nós vamos encontrar no céu. If the servant, what if the servant that we read about in the parable? E se o servo que nós, do qual nós lemos nessa parábola, were to call people to the banquet of the kingdom of God today? E se esse servo fosse chamar pessoas para o banquete de Deus hoje, what kind of excuses might he hear? Que tipo de desculpas talvez ouviríamos? Alexi, you've been invited to the banquet. Come to Jesus. Everything's ready. Alexi, você foi convidado para o banquete. Venha a Jesus. Tudo está pronto. Jesus, the banquet. Come to the banquet. Everything's ready. Caleb, come to Jesus. The banquet. Come to the banquet. Everything's ready. Caleb, come to Jesus. The banquet. Come to the banquet. Everything's ready. Caleb, come to Jesus
Não, 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 obrigado. Vou participar do filme na história de Jogo. Ah, eu não tenho tempo. Para minha leitura diária da Bíblia amanhã, eu preciso ler o Salmo 119. Brian, come to the banquet. Jesus is calling you. Everything's ready. I'm busy. I have to work a lot. But then I faithfully give the Lord a tithe of what I make. Estou ocupado, eu tenho que trabalhar demais, mas eu não diz o senhor, o senhor de tudo que eu ganho. Leandro, vem para o banquete, você está convidado, está tudo pronto, vem para Jesus. Deus vê que na igreja vai ajudar na cozinha, faça uma empresa após o tempo com o irmão. Para a cidade, para a palavra, a church, and the kitchen, e fui na parte da casa. You might think that that's a little bit humorous. Talvez nós pensemos que isso é engraçado. But the point is this. Mas a ideia é essa. Friends, what God is looking for is whether you are in the kingdom or you're not. O que Deus está buscando é se você está no reino ou não está. Either you love Jesus with all of your heart or you don't love him. Ou você ama Jesus de todo o seu coração ou você não ama. It doesn't matter whether you help out with setting up the church and help take down. That's a good thing. It's good to do all these things. It's good to help with feed my starving children. It's good to read Psalm 119. It's good to work and help your family. It's good to ask Jesus into your heart. But a lot of times people depend on those experiences and they think that they're good enough just because of what they do. That was the problem with the Pharisees. They thought that they were going to go to heaven and everything would be great because of all the things that they did. Acharam que iam para o céu e que tudo seria mil maravilhas por causa de tudo que faziam. This man in this parable is looking for people to come to his feast. Esse homem na parábola estava buscando pessoas para vir no banquete dele. He says to them, go and find these people so that they may come in, so that my house may be full. Ele fala, vem, acha essas pessoas para que eles possam entrar, para que minha casa esteja cheia. The important thing is that you are in the kingdom of God. O importante é que você está no dentro do reino de Deus. That you say yes to Jesus. Que você disse sim a Jesus. Maybe you've never done that. Talvez você nunca fez isso antes. Maybe you've been relying on some experience that you had years back. Talvez você tenha Maybe today is the day where you need to say, yes, I want to be 100% in the kingdom. I want to commit myself 100% to him. Maybe you've lived kind of um, straddling the fence for a long time. And you've done lots of good things, but you think, well, I don't want to be too religious. There was a man in history named John Wesley. John Wesley. John Wesley was the type of man that I'm talking about. He was extremely diligent in everything that he did for God. He woke up about, woke up about four o'clock every morning. He spent, he spent an extensive time of prayer and took for two hours. Then he would read his Bible for an hour. Then he would go to the jails, the prisons, the hospitals to minister to people. He taught people, he prayed for them, he helped them until late at night. He even became a missionary. But his story is as follows. When he was coming back from the mission field, back to England, the ship on which he was um, traveling went through a storm. And it was a terrible storm with waves crashing over the hull. The wind was furious. And he was terrified for his life. 
e John Wesley estava com medo pela sua vida. And yet he looked at this group of people on, also on the ship. Mas ele também e esse grupo de pessoas que também estavam no barco. Yes. And this group of people was singing hymns to God. E esse grupo de pessoas estavam cantando hinos, hinos a Deus. And he says, How can you people be so calm when the storm is going on? He said, I'm terrified for my life. And they said to him, if we die, it's okay. We're going to be with Jesus. And I started him thinking a little bit. He says, how can they know that? Ele pensou como que eles podem saber disso? How can they be so, so certain that they're going to go to heaven? Como que eles podem ter tanta certeza que vão para o céu? What have they done that I haven't done? Que eles fizeram que eu não tenho feito? And then he thought to himself, I came back after converting the heathen, but who will convert me? Aí ele pensou, eu, eu voltei depois de ter convertido, convertido os não crentes, mas quem vai me converter? He made it back to England. And he, went to, and he went to a small chapel and began to pray. And he heard the sermon that was being spoken on the book of Romans. And he listened carefully to the message. He listened to the good news. And for the first time in his life, he really believed it. He took hold of it for himself. And he writes in his journal that about a quarter to nine, he felt his heart strangely warm. <laughs> This is the type of thing that Jesus was talking about. E esse é o tipo de coisa que Jesus está falando. John Wesley was a very religious person. John Wesley era uma pessoa muito religiosa. But it was only at a quarter to nine on that night that he actually made the decision to believe wholeheartedly in Jesus. Mas foi só às quinze horas nove naquela noite que ele fez a decisão de crer em Jesus cem por cento. I don't know much about the details of your life here tonight. Eu não sei todos os detalhes da sua vida aqui hoje à noite. But I'd like us to just remember that you might be surprised at who enters, who is in the kingdom of God, and who won't be. And I'd like to ask you a question. Are you in or are you out? There's only one position. Either you're in or you're out. When Elijah spoke to the people of Israel. He said, "How long will you remain straddling between two opinions?" He said, "If God is God, then serve Him." But if Baal is the true God, then serve Him. But not. It's not good to be indecisive. And maybe in your life for a long time you've been thinking, well, someday I will totally give myself to Jesus. Someday I'll become one of these fanatical Christians. But you keep waiting. And you think I have a lot of time. The party has already begun. Everything that we read about, it's already begun in our hearts. And God is inviting us today. If you haven't made a decision to step over 100% into the kingdom of God, then tonight is the night to do it. E hoje Deus está nos convidando que se você não fez ainda de entrar 100% no reino de Deus, hoje à noite à noite de tomar essa decisão. I'd like to invite Leandro to come forward if he would help us with the song. Gostaria de convidar o Leandro para vir nos ajudar com uma música. Tonight we're going to be participating, uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper. Hoje vamos estar celebrando uh, a ceia do Senhor. And the Lord's Supper is nothing more than a celebration of those people who have done what I just talked about. E a ceia do Senhor é simplesmente é nada mais do que uh, uma celebração com essas pessoas das quais estamos falando. We're talking about a celebration. Uh, 
Connected to those who have given themselves 100% to Jesus. Estamos falando de uma celebração daqueles que já se entregaram 100% a Jesus. And the reason I say 100% is because you can't be halfway in the kingdom. You can't be with one foot in and one foot out. E a razão que eu falo 100% é que você não pode estar metade no reino de Deus. Não pode estar com o pé para dentro e o pé para fora. Jesus said of one church, I'm going to spew you, spew you out of my mouth because you're neither hot nor cold because you're lukewarm. Uh, para uma das igrejas, Jesus falou que eu vou te cuspir para fora porque você não é nem quente nem frio. And before we participate in the in the Lord's Supper, I'd like to give you a chance. If you would like to make a decision today, se você say, gostaria de fazer uma, uma decisão hoje, to give your heart completely to Jesus, de entregar o seu coração 100% completamente para Jesus, not just know about Him or think about Him, não simplesmente conhecer a respeito dele ou pensar sobre ele. But to give him yourself. All that you have and all that you are. And if you'd like to do that, I would invite you to come forward. And to take a public position and say yes. Before everybody here, I want to take a stand and say this. I'm 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 gonna follow Jesus. Decisão de seguir Jesus.